okay, 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 okay. We're gonna talk about Red Bull Junior team. And not specific driver, but the system. We're gonna talk about a little bit brief on this one. Alright. You guys know that first. He's the first Japanese driver to be in Formula 1 under the banner of Red Bull Junior team. He is the first driver since Sebastian Buemi to enter Formula 1 through Formula 2 slash GP2. Yeah, we're gonna take a little bit debunking-ish because if you didn't notice, before the pandemic let's say, Red Bull Junior team prefers their drivers go through Super Formula rather than Formula 2. Yeah, well, there's some drivers but they prefer Super Formula. Why is that? Is there any reason behind it? But in the end, we're gonna find out right now. So we're gonna get through out the drivers first. A little bit quick brief on which drivers race in Super Formula. The first one is Pierre Gasly. Freshly out of GP2 winners and the last GP2 winner, yeah, he should be in Formula 1 in 2017. But Red Bull has some kindness towards Daniel Kvyat, so in the end they let him hang around. They put Pierre Gasly in Super Formula, especially after the collaboration with Honda for 2018. They think, all right, let's put Pierre to learn about the Japanese cultures and everything like that because, because Helmut Mark believes that he could learn from the Japan way and everything like that with Honda. Thus, they put them in Team Mugen. And to be precise, when he did Super Formula, he did spectacularly well. Couple of wins, podiums, and he almost get the title. Until one round where obviously, if you know, a typhoon hits the round and cancel it. Lose out by points to Hiroki Shura. But hey, he still gets the right in the end, right? But after that, it's been a massive downhill. First one, because mostly of these drivers, they didn't compete full time in Super Formula, technically. We started off with Nirei Fukuzumi, where originally his main focus is Formula 2. But obviously the calendar clashed with Super Formula in the end, he has to sacrifice for Formula in the end to focus on Formula 2. In the end, some rounds replaced by Senna Sakaguchi and the drivers we gotta talk about is Dan Tictum. In the last rounds in 2018, he did, you can say, okay, because Helmut Marko already see Dan Tictum as the next one one driver in 2020. Thus, he puts Dan Tictum in a couple of races in 2018, so he gonna familiarize with Tim Mugen. So in 2019, he did badly to be honest. Didn't do well, no podiums, and he didn't reach too much on top 10s. Thus, Hamlet Marco with a little bit pressure because in the end, because there's no Red Bull drivers that come up to the step. Thus, that victim got dropped and replaced by Patricio O'Ward. I'm a little bit confused why Hamlet Marco picked him. Yes, he's the Indy Lights champion in 2018 and he did alright. But, and he did couple of races in IndyCar and then Helmut Marko thinks like, he could be the one for Alpha Tauri in 2020, alright? Nah, not really. Because this is the first year and the first year only where Paro Award raced outside the US. He raced obviously one round to replace Mavira Gunatan in the end. He plays the them for a couple of rounds of three rounds. Then Hamlet Marco says, "You're not good enough. Go back to Indy." And then replaced by Yuri Vips. He did show some glimpses in the end. All right, that's nice. But after that, the pandemic hits him very hard. Thus, he cannot go back to Japan to compete in Super Formula. And I forgot to mention one driver, and that's Lucas Hour. He raced in 2019 with BMAX Racing. I don't know why Raymond Marco picks him, but he did okay-ish, but it's not that well. Only one podium to his name, and he got dropped and doing race cars of Super GT. And he raced in GT cars and DTM. So is it failure? Obviously yes, but why they still insisting they need to put 
drivers in Super Formula. That's before the pandemic. The first thing we gotta talk about is money. Red Bull doesn't want to fund some of the drivers to Formula 2. As we already know, Red Bull needs a tons of money to enter Formula 2. They don't want to fund Yuri Vips, to be honest. They don't want to fund Yuri Vips to Formula 2. But in the end, Red Bull fund him for this year's Formula 2. Just because they, in the end, they don't want to be the bad guy who ruins Yuri's life in last season. Thus, they compete in. And obviously, the pandemic, well, they rather to put them in Formula 2 for now. And, and I forgot to mention this. If you look at the recent drivers promoted from Red Bull Junior Team to Formula 1, since Sebastian Buemi, all of them are not come from Formula 2, GP2, until Yuki Tsunoda. If you look at Hemi Akusuari, Daniel Ricciardo, Jean Eric Vern, Carlos Sainz, they come up from Formula Renault 3.5. And there's Daniel Kvyat and Max Verstappen coming from GP3 and Formula 3 respectively. If you look at the budgets and everything, Formula Renault 3.5 is still a lot cheaper-ish compared to Formula 2 GP2. The only driver that really competes in Formula 2 GP2 that, that really succeed is only Pierre Gasly and Yuki Tsunoda. And also, in Super Formula, Helmut Marko thinks the drivers are okay. They are not talented drivers, they are just okay drivers because especially Japanese drivers, they think it's not that competitive. But in the end, only Pierre Gasly managed to be better rather than anyone else. Dan Tickton for example. Yui Vips, but we never know because obviously the pandemic hits them. We never see the full potential of these drivers compete in Super Formula. But believe me, Super Formula drivers are not to play with as well. Don't take underestimate, but I believe Helmut Marko thinks Super Formula is easy way as well. If you look at the budget as well, it's a little bit cheaper ish. They have the connection with Honda, so it will be cheaper in the end. But with Honda announced they're not gonna compete in Formula 1 anymore with Red Bull as well obviously and AlphaTauri. In the end, Red Bull has to settle with Formula 2 for now and especially with the pandemic. So that's all. Is Red Bull gonna stick with Formula 2 for now? I think so, yes, obviously for now. But if there's massive changes towards the budgets of Formula 2, Red Bull gonna stick them up or even the unwanted one, for example, if Dennis Hogger jumps to Formula 2, he's needed a big funding, so Red Bull gonna involve but not gonna cover, yeah, let's say 70 to 80 percent. They're gonna cover up probably 30 to 40 percent. Not a big one because obviously it's still expensive. And Super Formula, can they do it again? I think not because obviously, like I said before. Their Honda links gonna cut by the end of this year. If they continue again, that's good on him because I believe the links up with Red Bull and Japanese motorsports still there. But I don't think it's under the banner of Helmut Marko, under the banner of Red Bull Japan. If you look at Ukio Sasahara, Hiroki Otsu, and Toshiko Oyu, they race under the, the Japanese Red Bull. Ryo Hirakawa is sponsored by Red Bull, but he's not a Red Bull Junior Draft, so yeah, like that. So what do you guys think? Should Red Bull consider Formula 2 as the main way in the end? Or is there any restructuring in Formula 2 so everyone could afford to enter Formula 2? Or even Red Bull gamble again on Super Formula? Comment below, alright? Thank you guys for watching. See you guys later. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Don't forget to follow my Instagram and Twitter at RTHVR. Alright, see you guys later. <laughs> Plus there is a new team so but uh, let's take quite a lot to, to get used to.